Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today, I am the last DJ in the world to get it and review it and talk about it, but it's okay because it's still awesome. This is the Rain Performer right out of the box onto the table. You can see the table is not even big enough for this beast. As always, no unboxing videos. I hate those. No super in-depth reviews. I wanna show you some of the things that I like as a mobile DJ and show you what it's like to just get it out of the box, throw it on a table, hook up your laptop, and go from there. Let's get into it. Okay, so just initially, right out of the box, like I said, onto the table, hooked up my speakers here in the studio, hooked up uh, my MacBook, the M1 that I've had for a few years now, and then plugged in the IEC cord on the back. That's all I did. So what do you see first? You're obviously gonna get the warning message that your driver is not installed. I clicked install now probably two minutes later, not even, maybe a minute later, and after a MacBook restart, boom, opened up Serato, turned up my booth output, turned on my speakers, and I was DJing just like that. Very easy to set up, and if you are familiar with Pioneer or Rain controllers, this is gonna be even easier for you, especially for my Rain DJs. In fact, we took this controller to DJX in Atlantic City in August, and my friend DJ Icon from Myrtle Beach, actually, who is a Rain basically demo DJ for that company. Had never even seen it, really just saw it right out of the box. We had it sitting in the prototype for the new Bun Gear gig desk that's coming soon, by the way. He kind of messed around with it, installed the driver, and then the next thing you know, he did a full, I think he either played 30 minutes or an hour set right there in our trade show booth absolutely ripped it. So the familiarity and the location of the buttons was just like the other rain stuff he uses translated right to this, and he was able to hop on and smash that set perfectly. So that just tells you how easy it is to take it right out of the box. All right, so let's go over some of the connections before we get into kind of the features on top, if you will. Looking at the back of the controller, you've got a power button. You've got, like I said, your IEC power cord. There is no chunky kind of uh, wall wart or power block like I call them. This is uh, ventilation because again, this controller, unlike the RAIN 4, has motorized platters. We'll talk about those in a minute. You have a USB-B and a USB-A in case you have two DJs playing on the same controller and you wanna switch back and forth. Your main out is obviously balanced XLR. You also have an RCA out. You can have a switch here from stereo to mono. Really nice to have on the exterior there. Your quarter inch booth out. And then you also have some other line or phono ends here and a ground if you wanted to hook up a turntable. I really like this as well. You've got your mic one and mic two, both again balanced XLR cables, or again, you could use a quarter inch in the middle, but I love uh, XLR cables and XLR connectivity. And so your mic one and mic two, which is pretty unusual for controller, usually you have mic one as XLR, mic two is only quarter inch, but boom, you got that there. So now let's talk about some of the things that are interesting about this controller, that are awesome about this controller, and what make it different than the Rain 4. So here are the highlights. This is a four channel controller if you need four channels in your life, right? whether you hook up different inputs or you need four decks going. It does have motorized platters, unlike the Rain 4, like I said. Some people want them, some people don't. The quality of these platters and the way they feel and the way you can speed them up and slow them down is absolutely unreal. They even have kind of different slip mats where you can change the feel of the top. These volume faders are precision feel faders. You can actually take this little plate off right here and adjust them with a screwdriver to make them more tense or not. There's also on this side of the controller, a tension control knob for the crossfader. If you want it super loose, if you're a scratch DJ, or if you're more of a blend DJ, you probably want more tension on it. Now, looking at this side of the controller, again, we're talking about the exterior stuff before we talk about all the features. You have got from left to right, you've got your second mic input is here. Your first one's gonna be up on top of the board. Your mic two is down here. It's got a really nice toggle switch. It's got a low, high, and then a gain adjustment. And then you've got your different channels. One, two, three, and four, or three, one, two, four is how they're labeled on most controllers. You've got your crossfader contour, and then you've got what you want on each deck, left, right, or through. Then moving over to the far right, of course, you've got your headphone controls. You've got a quarter inch in, you've got an eight inch in, you've got your split cue your level, and then again, if you want more cue or more master, depending on how you like to mix. I always have mine on the cue, and then I'm always listening to the song that's playing to the crowd 
in my other ear. Looking at the top of this, one of the things that really stands out is the number of screens this has. One on your left platter, two on your right platter. You have a small one here in the middle for your effects and your different ways to tweak the effects. You've got also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight above these, uh, we'll call them hot cues or pads, if you will. And they allow you to tell what is on the pad and also when you hit the shift function, what else they can do. So the number of screens on this thing, I don't wanna say it's overwhelming, but it is more than probably any controller to date has put out but I think they're super helpful. They're not just there to be there. But I guess at the end of the day, one of the most important new features that wasn't on the Rain 4 is stems control. If you've seen DJs that are good with stems, it's a game changer. Having the ability to just take a beat or just the acapella of a song at your fingertips is revolutionary for sure. Once Pioneer had that on the Flex 10, I knew Rain wouldn't be far behind. They didn't even wait till NAM to drop this thing. It was just like, boom, middle of the summer drop. Like I said a little while ago, there are a ton of effect options. You can tweak it. You've got these paddle switches here that can lock into place or you can hold them into place. So if you're a knob twister and a DJ that likes a lot of effects and to kind of tweak the sound, this is a controller for you as well. And finally, just the overall build quality of this thing is superior. It's an actual tank. It's about 30 pounds. And as for pricing, most retailers online have it around $2,000. Whereas the Rain 4 without the motorized tops is about $1,500. Okay, so do you need it? Probably not, unless your other controller is starting to go bad or if you're trying to become better at scratching. Do you want it? Of course you do. We're DJs, buying gear is what we do. This is a solid purchase if you're looking for a four channel controller with motorized platters and stems. Based on my short time playing with it, right out of the box, onto the table, I am super impressed. If you want a more detailed, thorough review and every knob, bell, whistle that this has, go check out Mojack's video. I'll put the link down below or Cleveland Terry's video. I'll put his link down below as well. From there to watch the Rain 4 video because a lot of the functionality is the exact same, but my video is just, what does a mobile DJ think of it? Taking it out of the box, slapping it on the table, hooking up his laptop, really somebody that usually uses Pioneer. What are my thoughts? I hope that I answered that today. Do you have one of these? Let me know what you think about it. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Put it in the comments below. Are you gonna buy it? Let me know in the comments below. I always personally respond to those myself. And again, give the video a big old thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so. I'm always trying to build the channel and put out a new video every single week. So I need your subs. Thank you guys.